Welcome back to the Flight Brothers. Today we're going to take the Concord FXP and show you how you can use a flight plan and the available autopilot to complete a normal regular service flight. Welcome sim captains, we're here at runway 13 right at JFK. This is a typical departure airport for Concorde. We're going to be setting up a flight plan to Heathrow, so let's get inside. The uh, pushback for this has not been working. Better pushback didn't function correctly. Default laminar didn't function correctly. And the built-in pushback is referred to here somewhere, ground probably. Uh, here we go. There, pushback truck in development. It says use reverser. I don't feel like doing that, so we're starting on the runway. We're going to first need to power up. Uh, we did this in our other video. So, flight engineer. System on startup. runway one, three, right, flaps. Let flaps. X Roz do her thing. Alright, so now that we've got that going, let's go back out to the main menu flight preparation. I showed you in the other video how you can do the waypoints. Oh, they're still there. I'm going to clear this out. I meant for us to be starting from scratch. We're going to clear again within five seconds. Okay. So if you were starting from scratch like this, um, you could either put it in by hand or use a pre-made flight plan like you might get out of SimBrief. And herein lies the issue. Simbrief does not have a Concorde, so you can either use a plan for a different aircraft and tweak it, or you can try and find a Concorde plan. There's some available on the internet. Uh, I have done that for you. Let's take a peek. Here is a plan for a 747 Model 400. You might notice the routing for this 744 keeps us over land, over Nova Scotia, for quite a amount of time, and that's a big no-no for Concorde. Concorde, to be allowed to go supersonic, needs to be over water, so it doesn't annoy anyone. So uh, I grabbed an actual Concorde routing and stuck it into SimBrief, just copied and pasted. I did have a few expired waypoints, so I just uh, went on Sky Vector and connected the arrival at Heathrow from the... Uh, Atlantic track on my own, and here's what we came up with. So you'll notice the routing is more southerly. Pretty much we go straight out to sea, and we come up the channel, and that allows us to uh, really spend as, as much time as we need in the supersonics, and we're not going to bother anyone. So once um, I was in SimBrief, I took the 747 Model 400 plan, I pasted in my route so I could have the southerly route, and then I adjusted the altitude. You can override it and we'll show you where to put that in right here. So now that we've got the route and the altitude as we want, let's load that plan. So if you didn't see, I clicked load here. This is in that uh, output FMS plans folder in your, uh, yeah, I believe it's the output directory in your X-Plane folder. And I labeled it here, KJFK EGLL Concord. So we're gonna click the arrow. There it is, boom, look at that. Uh, LLs for latitude, longitude, you've got five letter GPS waypoints, our four letter ICAL airport, KJFK, and Heathrow EGLL, latitudes, longitudes, altitudes. You can see my override in SimBrief gave us uh, flight level 550, 55,000 feet.
Speeds are all zeroed out. I don't really think that's going to matter because I think we're going to be doing the throttle manually. Quite honestly, I don't think the altitude might matter, but we are going to see if we can get it working. Uh, we have our distances. Uh, notice the times are not showing up, but that might be because speeds aren't in there. If you do want to go back and change this, since Simbrief didn't put it in, you can scroll through here and put it in. So for example, let's say by waypoint number two, how far is it? 258 miles. We are definitely going to be at altitude and ready to rock. So let's put in 2.2. I believe that should give us Mach 2.2. Hit insert. It says it's accepted. And now we have a time estimate. So the time calculation is working. Um, I'm not going to bore you to death putting those all in but you could do that. So here's what we want to do next. You see the commit. This is like your execute button on the FMC. We're going to click commit and that is where the magic happens. Let's get rid of the graphic user interface. Alright, so after we got rid of the graphical user interface, we're now ready to set up to fly. Uh, we've got one Garmin down here in front of the panel, which I showed you in the previous video. You can click the center to get the pop-out version, which follows you everywhere. Click the bezel to get rid of it. There's also another Garmin here on this plate for the window and that gives you actually a pretty nice setup for flying. But the most important aspect of the Garmin is the flight plan which when we loaded it in the graphic user interface it got ported in automatically. So FPL on the right hand side flight plan and there it is look at that. Got your altitudes, distances, track pretty much ready to go. So let's get this off the screen. A uh, quick note for you, I've intentionally not used a standard instrument departure. I mean if you think about it most of those they're, they're generated for an aircraft doing 250 knots. Uh, the, the sorts of turns and the speeds are just not really going to be sensible for Concorde. Basically our plan is to head out to sea, skyrocket up to our altitude and get into super cruise. So pretty much uh, that's a good thing because we have, what's our first waypoint, 257 nautical miles. That's good because it's going to give us a little bit of time to mess around with the cruise and the handling before we're trying to engage any uh, navigation features. Little note on fuel before we take off. Let's go back to the graphical user. Go into flight preparation. The fuel manager is in development, but the payload manager is pretty much working. So up uh, here, it's kind of obvious you can change payload, you can change freight, but forget about that for a moment. Look at this range bar. This appears to be functioning at the moment. It's showing us as having a range right now of uh, 3,450 nautical miles. I believe that is probably correct. The distance from London to New York is shown down here as 3,220, so that should be within range. You notice our loaded route doesn't actually reflect, so I don't think that part's working yet. Clicking over to Fuel Manager, see how the bottom's about the same? Let's go back and forth. You see how the range thing is not really working? We don't have an estimated range anymore. These are in red, which I assume is supposed to mean it's out of range. Um, one other little quirk here I noticed, <laughs> this is really kind of tiny small potatoes, passengers and crew, look at this, 15,300 pounds and payload, 15,322. So if you know some of the numbers jumping, that's some little quirk there. Um, checking an actual real Concorde plan, it had a block fuel, of, uh, I got it written down here. 82,230 kilograms and I believe at the moment if you look over here uh, actually on the panel we're at 86,000 and counting down because we're sitting here burning fuel while I'm talking so long story short I think we have more fuel than we need so we've done our route we've done our fuel winds are calm I've actually turned off weather updating because I tend to pause a lot when I'm videoing and it really ruins my day when the weather update changes things massively. 
So let's get ready for takeoff. We're going to go back to the flight engineer. We are going to trim for takeoff. All right, he said we're trimmed for takeoff. On the overhead, we have uh, extendable landing lights. And on the far, far up overhead, we have anti-collision and nav lights. That should make us uh, look like a real aircraft. All right. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, I got so many comments. So many comments on the last video. <laughs> Pfizer down five degrees. Uh, I, I will be honest with you. The viewpoint in here it's not going to affect it that much for what we're doing. So if you wanted to cheat, you could leave the nose up. It didn't hurt us last time. But for realism's sake, let's do it the way it should be. The nose is down five. The visor with it. All right, I believe we're ready for takeoff. Uh, another item people commented on. They wanted some toga. Um, Basically, you're going to slam the throttles forward. It will be electronically controlled by Concorde itself, so you don't need to stabilize and worry about that. Uh, Toga does seem to be working. So I clicked my button, and there it goes. Let's go on back. And Beautiful sight. Time to go. V speeds are calculated. There will be callouts. Uh, on that graphical user interface, we do have those listed. believe I set our altimeter. Shame on me. Alright, at this point... At this point I think we're high enough we can uh, safely go for some autopilot functionality. So first I'm going to click in autopilot one command. Let's use pitch. Set it to about 10. We are climbing without the reburn at the moment. Now I'm going to go over here and click nav. And notice this, a turn is initiating. I am completely off the controls. So this is good news. If you were afraid you would be flying, hopping the pond completely by hand, you do have some autopilot functionality. There's been plenty of complaints uh, in the video comments that the autopilot doesn't work. But hey, you can make this cool light show. If you missed it in the previous video, things that flash don't work. Uh, it is completely my understanding that the plan is to get all of the autopilot functionality operating on the panel just like you would expect it. But again, this is an early release. There's enough here that you can make a go of it. And uh, I certainly understand. Let's get those lights. Certainly understand not everybody. Oh, thank you. Let's trim for flight. It's actually very nice that they remind us because I'm busy talking to you. I understand not everybody uh, 
loves a uh, price tag around $50 for an aircraft that is partially functional. And the textures need some work, as we discussed. But, uh, for my opinion, this is a great start. It's the best we've had in X-Plane. And you can see that the items that are done are done immaculately, like the ground equipment. Uh, the little startup feature on the instruments where they all run up. They're amazing. They're great. Love them. The things that aren't finished yet, rather than take sort of the lazy way and give us a default FMC, as so many aircraft frequently do, uh, they've given you this Garmin kind of as a workaround, and I I'm, I'm certain the plan is to make this completely realistic. It just looks and smells like it to me. I think we're going to see this become one of the favorite X-Plane aircraft. Um, now I might also have the benefit of not having flown uh, well-rendered Concords in some other sims and that might be why it's a little easier for me to accept it. Alright, so right now we're climbing on pitch hold. We have the nav function operating. Altimeter setting. Thank you. And looks like we've got a good start. Oh, that's nice. That's the first time I've done the flyby. That's a really good sound effect. We need to do that one more time. Checking back in for a moment, we are going to punch the throttles up here, get back into reburn. Here comes the indicator lights down here, the last row. Now we need to watch our airspeed limits. Still in pitch hold. Uh, five, six, seven, about eight, eight degrees up. Uh, we're still in nav. Go. That's us. Get our range out. There we go. Doing nicely far out to sea. Shouldn't annoy anyone with noise. Approaching Mach 1. Listen for the call out. point you can see ah, we're just a little under 50,000 feet. I had lowered the nose to bring our airspeed up. We're hoping to get past Mach 1.7 so we can cut the reheat. Our reheat clock is a little over 12 minutes. There was a call out warning a moment ago. Uh, we're not supposed to do more than 15 minutes. Although I have exceeded it. There we go. We're over 1.7 so we're going to try Back out the reheat. Pull back the throttles, reheats off. Okay. Checking Garmin. We're headed for our first waypoint and turn. See the view from the seats in the back. The signs are working correctly. Oops, sorry, both cabins. All right, checking in. We've successfully passed our first waypoint. Moving on to the next. We've achieved our super cruise target of Mach 2.2. And we're a little over 52,000 feet. Uh, looks like, what are we at, about eight or nine degrees up. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Four. Four or five. Uh, for some reason, I was thinking this black line was ten, but it's obviously not. So I'm going to keep a check on our uh, altitude. Just watch and see how much it will hold if I need to adjust that angle or not. But otherwise, we are well under our way for our first hop across the pond here in Concord. All right, back up front. Uh, we're a little over flight level 537. Uh, we're pretty much trimmed down if you look at it. Barely climbing. We're holding Mach 2.2. Ooh, ooh. What am I doing? Oh, I messed with the altimeter, sorry. Got in that scroll region, and we are still uh, on path with our flight plan. A couple waypoints down already, so things are going very nicely. So we're going to wrap this video up here. The uh, autopilot is functioning correctly. If you properly input a flight plan and use nav on the Garmin, you can also use altitude. We've had success. I just didn't find it necessary. Uh, pitch hold works perfectly. We basically set it at flight level uh, 520. Uh, we were about 4 degrees up and as the aircraft lightened we were gliding on up. So, this is the Flight Brothers on the early release Kolimata Concorde. Plan the flight and fly the plan.